I love the line Jesus saying to these two ambitious disciples, you do not know what you are asking. And if we want to translate it a little bit to understand it differently, Jesus is saying, uh, I think you're trying to bite off more than you can chew. You can see here the snake that starts out thinking it can consume its meal and it realizes once it's a bit too late that it's bitten off more than it can chew. So James and John, these disciples, are doing something that we heard about last week in the story of the rich man. Remember, the rich man was, he was overestimating his ability to earn God's grace, overestimating his abilities. And, and the message he got back was, there's nothing you can do, there's not enough that you can do to do what only God can do, which is your salvation. And then last week also, the rich man was underestimating his ability to follow Jesus. He was underestimating his ability to live without these markers of success. And so fast forward to this week, we have James and John, the disciples, who are overestimating their importance and their ability to sit beside Jesus every step of the way in his march towards what they see as his glory, as his success. And they're also underestimating something. They're underestimating the people who are walking with him. Do you overestimate yourself? Or maybe you underestimate your potential, your ability to walk, to, to do something. Overestimating, underestimating is a bit of a mistake that we make as followers of Jesus Christ. When this happened during the Super Bowl, I thought to myself immediately, this is really going to be a great sermon illustration. I just don't know when. If you're watching the Super Bowl, you'll recall that once, so once upon a time, um, whenever somebody would run out onto the field during like a football game, uh, sometimes it's like a streaker, sometimes they didn't have time to become a streaker, the camera would follow them and the producers realized that's just encouraging people. Uh, so during the Super Bowl, there was this moment where the cameras just cut away and they didn't show anything on the field. And anyone who's watched football for a while realized there's a streaker on the field. Now, just let me, I just need to talk to my mother for a second. Okay, Mom, the picture I have on the screen, yes, it has the guy who ran out in the field, but he's not a streaker. He's wearing pants, and so I'm not putting a naked photo in front of everybody on Sunday morning, so I don't need to hear about it afterwards, Mom. The guy who ran out on the field, his name was Alex Gonzalez, and he ran out along with his buddy, and within seconds he was tackled. But the backstory is an excellent example of overestimating and underestimating. Because this is what he did. He figured, I can beat the system. I can beat Vegas. He underestimated the house, and you never underestimate the house uh, when you're placing a bet. He thought, all I need to do is go online and place a bet that someone is going to run out onto the field during the Super Bowl. And so he, he was ready to you know, put his money down, but first he had to make sure that he got to the Super Bowl. So he and his buddy bought Super Bowl tickets. And they only cost, what, like 50 bucks, $100? No. So he shelled out for himself and his friend $42,000 so that he could run out onto the field and then capture this windfall. You're like, 
I'm a genius, he thought to himself. So he got his tickets, and he was telling everybody who would listen, you, you, you want to bet some money. You want to you put some money. And he's telling everyone to bet because that will increase his windfall. But then when he went online to place the bet, that bet was no longer an option. So he bought $42,000 worth of tickets to do something that wasn't going to get him anything except a night in jail. So he paid $42,000 to end up in jail. Why? Because he overestimated his own genius and underestimated Vegas. And they're kind of smart, those people. Again, do we do that? What, what might we be overestimating and underestimating? James and John, these two brothers, last week the rich man, they're their overestimating and underestimating is driven by competition. They're comparing themselves to the people around them. Like it's a, like it's a contest, like it's a competition. And competition, in that sense, is a real stumbling block to our spirituality. That kind of competition with people around us is a real stumbling block to our ability to follow Jesus, to walk with Jesus. Why is it a stumbling block? Because in that competition, we're seeking to be greater than those who are around us. In that competitive thinking, we need to assess people around us as being less than us so that we can get ahead by being more than them. And as I pointed out in the introduction to the scripture passage today, Jesus has just finished telling his disciples, if you want to follow me, you got to be like the littlest among us, the least among us. If you want to follow me, the first have to be last. If you want to follow me, you got to be like a servant. And of course, in typical fashion, the disciples, it, they didn't get it. And so a rich man comes along, disciples come along, and they're still walking in this, this competition the world has set up. And they hatch their various schemes. They place their various bets. They do their version of running out onto the field so that they can have their moment of glory, but it backfires. Jesus stops them in the tracks, arrests them, makes them spend a night in jail thinking about things mentally, and teaches us along the way that it's not how much money you have that is going to get you into God's graces. It's not how much social influence you have that's going to help you to follow Jesus Christ. And the people who are around us, they're, they're part of this following of disciples. We're, I, I have this, this saying, uh, growing up, I realized that when my friends succeed, I succeed. I don't need to be in competition with them. When, when our brothers and sisters share the good news in the world, we're doing it too. And when we do it, they're, they're part of that good news. So why do people overestimate themselves? You've probably heard about this from pop psychology. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And whether or not it's actually true, we, I don't care. It's really interesting to think about. Uh, it's a cognitive bias, and it's the idea and an illusion that we're superior to other people, that we believe we're smarter than others, and that we're more capable than we actually are. And you can imagine when you hold on to that understanding, 
You can imagine the kind of trouble that you can get into. The, this theory comes up with reasons for why it is that people can't see their incompetence. And the main reason is just poor self-awareness, uh, which usually means not having enough mirrors in our lives through other people to let us know who we really are. And without those connections with other people, we have this sense of grandiosity. It, it's an overestimation of our ability. Now, one of the authors of this theory has a great quote. I just, I'm going to read it here because I love the way he's trying to say something without coming out and saying it. Incompetence does not leave people disoriented, perplexed, or cautious. What he's saying is, the people who don't know what they're doing, uh, they're not bothered by it. Instead, the incompetent are often blessed with an inappropriate confidence buoyed by something that feels to them like knowledge. He says blessed, I think he means burdened with a sense of inappropriate confidence. Where are we overestimating ourselves and underestimating others when it comes to our walk as followers of Jesus Christ. And what does it mean for us to take a step back and feel some humility and get a sense that, just like the rich man, we're not going to buy our way into God's graces. And like James and John, we're, we're not going to... Um, ingratiate ourselves into God's graces. That, that lack of self-awareness when it is uh, coupled with a lack of appreciation for others is where that stumbling block happens. Let me tell you this story. There were parents who for their daughter's 16th birthday bought her an automobile and the parents said to their their daughter we got you this car and we got it a while ago we got it a while ago but like it, it works and we're so pleased to give it to you and and then the parents said you know we're just curious how about you take take that vehicle Take it down to the dealership so that you can get a sense for how much it's worth. And so the daughter brought the vehicle to a dealership and came back and said to the parents, uh, the, the people there said that, you know, it, maybe they could give me $100 for it. It's old and it's not running well. And the parents, they said, well, why don't you take why don't you take the vehicle to the pawn shop and see what they say, just to get a sense of what it's really worth. And so the daughter took the vehicle to the pawn shop, and when she came back, she reported to her parents, they, they said they, at most they'd give me $200 for it. But they said, it, it's old, it's not really worth much. So the parents then said to the daughter, how about you take the vehicle down to the antique car club and just talk to some of the people there? And so she did. And then when she came back to her parents, she said, when I brought it down to the antique car club, they were amazed by it. They were excited that it was old, and they said, this has so much potential uh, this is a rare find, and this is worth uh, thousands and thousands of dollars. And, and the parents said to their, their child, yeah, it's, I, want, I want you, we want you to know that it's important to hang out in places where people can see the value that's in you a value that may be masked by the world. 
when we underestimate the value of other people, we're stumbling in terms of our walk with Jesus. We're, we're lacking a sense of awareness of their worth and comparing ourselves to them, which requires a real lack of awareness. And that becomes a stumbling block in being the good news to other people. Jesus said to James and John, you know what? I don't think you can follow us. I don't think you can follow me. I don't think you can suffer the way that I'm going to suffer. And they overestimated themselves and said, we are able. And Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup that I drink. You will suffer. You will have the baptism by fire with which I'm baptized. You will suffer. And that's the message that we have in this season, this purple season of Lent, that we walk in our shoes the path that Jesus has walked, and as we do so, we get a clearer sense that this isn't about a walk to glory. This is a walk to understanding that as followers of Jesus Christ, that we can be the good news to those around us. Do you agree, Leo? <laughs> yes, you do. I met Leo the other day, and Leo has this wonderful ability to imitate voices, right? Yeah, don't you? Mm-hmm. Let's sing before we head down and get to know some people down in the Golden Jubilee Room. Mm -hmm. 